Hey VC, this is a weekly installment of Revolutions. Um, can't remember number 17, 18. It'll be somewhere. Um, and um, just a, just a collection of the records I've played in the last week. Uh, yeah, just I hope you enjoy. Uh, and um, you probably can't hear, but at the moment. In the background, uh, I have uh, John Kale. Uh, this is the Academy in Peril. It's an original pressing. Uh, this is from 1970. Shit. Uh, 1972. Um, sleeve designed by Andy Warhol. Yeah, it's a very cool record. It's quite experimental. And, very interesting to listen to. Um, so that's what I'm listening to at the moment. And I have about 15 records there to explore with you uh, and to just talk about. Uh, yesterday, I popped this on Catch a Fire by Bob Marley and the Whales. Actually, I'll take the uh, plastic off. This was the original sleeve, um, the uh, Zippo cover. Uh, this is the deluxe edition, which I highly recommend to any fan of this record because it contains um, two CDs, one of which is the original Catch a Fire without the overdubs, and the other one's got the overdubs, the released version, because uh, Chris Blackwell wanted the record to sound more sort of radio friendly, so he puts lots of different overdubs on the, on the music. Bob Marley was not impressed at all. Uh, so I played this um, last weekend, must have been sun last Sunday, I really I had this really great moment where I enjoyed uh, this record. This is Yola Tango, uh, and then Nothing Turned Itself Inside Out which is um, a record from 2001, I think, from Yola Tango. I just pulled that because so, so much glare. This is a fantastic record, a very sort of dream pop, uh, indie rock sound, um, much in the vein of what Sonic Youth did back then as well in the, in the late 90s. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful record. Uh, Yolo Tango, a band from uh, Hoboken, New Jersey. They've been together for years and years and years. And This is one of their finest records. Uh, not my favorite, but probably my second favorite. Here is a little known obscurity uh, from Spain, actually. This is Pa Riba. I'll put the uh, name there. There you go. Power Riba. Uh, and the album is called uh, Joe, La Doña, El Ia Gripao. Uh, I've got no idea what that may or may not mean. This guy. I think this is Catalan rather than uh, Spanish. Catalan being the uh, language of the region of Catalonia, which is where Barcelona is. Uh, I think this is. Uh, this is a psychedelic folk record, kind of like a 1972 version of a Devendra Banhart record. You know, it's got this kind of sort of dreamy, ethereal, kind of um, pixie-like quality. <laughs> makes any sense. You know, if you know Devendra Banhart, you know what I'm talking about. This... It's a very, you know, it's got this kind of, yeah, psychedelic folk uh, tinge with it. And since we're talking about psychedelic folk, a nice little segue. This is, I played The Mad Cat Laughs by uh, Sid Barrett. This is the two albums that he released. Uh, that is the self-titled Barrett and The Mad Cat Laughs. And I only played the Madcap Laughs because I loved the record. Terrapin, uh, what's on it? Terrapin, um, Dominoes, uh, Love You, No Man's Land, 
Yeah, octopus. Actually, Domino's is on Barrett, as it turns out. <laughs> Great records um, from the early 70s. Um, since we're talking about singer songwriters, um, uh, I showed this for the um, for the face thread. Oh, look! Oh, this is perfect. Look at this. Um, for the face thread, <laughs> it's just it's amazing. I'm wearing the same color as well. Um, I played this again. Uh, this is. Just a, a lovely, lovely piece of music. Um, uh, the, arguably the greatest side project of any Beach Boys. Um, amazing, amazing record. Just a beautiful piece of music. This is the Sunday's reissue from 2008, I think. Yes, triple LP on Pacific Ocean Blue Vinyl. Uh, has his other couple of unreleased records, I think Bamboo and some other unreleased tracks. Fantastic. Um, yesterday I picked up the uh, the Sunday newspapers, um, the Saturday newspapers, the Sunday today, and uh, there was an article on Cybertron, and uh, this album. Uh, has been re-released on vinyl this week. This is an original copy of this. According to the article um, in the newspapers, it said that uh, this is a clear light of Jupiter, uh, a Melbourne label. I know the guy who runs this label actually, who used to run this label, sorry, <laughs> used to. Um, and uh, this is the original copy of Cybertron's first album. And I read the article, actually, I slipped the article inside there. Um, here it is. Uh, and it said that this album here, um, first Cybertron record, one of the very first Australian electronic records ever made. Um, this record was only pressed to 1,000 copies, so it's cool. So it's a real artifact, really. I mean, uh, Cybertron. Um, Steve Maxwell von Brown's was the leader, uh, songwriter of Cybertron. Um, just amazing, amazing band. Again, for the face thread, I pulled this out and this. If you take one record from all the records from this video, just this this is the one. This is just an absolute masterpiece of singer songwriter, broke pop folk. It's very hard to define. This guy was a singer in the Zombies, and uh, this album is just totally amazing. I mean, that's it. It's a classic from 1971, one year, Colin Blundstone, go get, it's fantastic. I also pulled out some old classics um, about this. <laughs> one thing I show this very often in the VC, the cramps with the uh, songs the Lord uh, taught us. The cramps obviously a uh, cult kind of sort of psycho Billy, rockabilly kind of crew um, with uh, Lux Interior and uh, Poison Ivy um, you know they would do gigs in mental asylums and stuff like that They're just insane and this one's got um, the classic you know cramp songs I was a teenage werewolf uh, sunglasses in the dark what's it got um, TV sets um, cover of Strict 9 cover of uh, Fever uh, I'm cramped. Oh, just an absolute classic from 1980 on IRS, the uh, label, uh, the REM label actually. Um, 
And as usual, I've got my uh, Leonard Cohen spot in this installment. I, I love, I love Leonard Cohen and I love it. I love the music at the moment. I just have something. I'm, I'm in one of those phases and this week it is Songs from a Room, um, which is just really perfect as an album. I mean, Burn and Wire, Story of the Isaac, uh, The Partisan, um, Lady Midnight. It's just a stunning, stunning record, 1972, I think. Yeah, amazing. You may be shocked, but one of my all-time favorite albums, in fact, I would probably put it in my top 10 favorite albums, and that sounds like a big statement, but um, is the first album by U2, Boy. Um, I just love this record. Um, I got into this when I was about 14 or 15 or something and um, it sort of got me through my teenage years you know it had this sound this sort of strip back post-punk line with 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 uh, a an optimism that other post-punk band probably didn't really um, project you know if you listen to a joy division record it's gloomy and it's dark and it's if you listen to a, uh, uh, I don't know, a, a wire record, you know, you might get a sense of humor there, but it's it's always like, as this is really sort of kind of innocent and, you know, it wants to get you somewhere, you know, and it's as good as any post-punk record, you know, Whatever U2 is up to these days, whatever they're doing these days, it doesn't matter. Because if they only made this this record, this would be a cult classic. This Seriously. This would be an absolute cult classic if they only made that record. People would go, oh, you know, have you heard that, you know, obscure uh, record by U, this band called U2? This, it's just amazing. It's just dark, but, you know, the bass is brilliant, the drumming is great. To another classic, uh, Dummy by Portishead, which is one of my all-time favorite records as well. I'd probably play Dummy and Boy almost on a weekly basis in one form or another. Um, what to say? Dummy, 20 years uh, anniversary. Also played um, songs for a uh, Taylor by Jack Bruce. I pulled it out for the the Faith thread and didn't end up including it in the Faith thread, but I played it and I really enjoyed it. And this is yeah his best album. It's just got this sort of UK jazz rock twist to this singer songwriter music. Fantastic. Uh, an Australian kind of rarity, obscurity. John Sangster, Once Around the Sun, soundtrack for a movie concert, concert movie, which was never really released. Um, lots of really far out, sort of borderline psychedelic sounds, um, you know, mixing sort of Aboriginal kind of um, sounds with, you know, jazz and and psych. Fantastic. A reissue on Roundtable. Amazing from a couple of years back. <laughs> I absolutely love this record. And the other day when I played it, it just was exactly the right... You know, sometimes there's moments you can play records and they work perfectly and other times it just doesn't quite... Like I, I was at home and I just put this on and it just blew my mind. It's just fantastic. Really, really great record. Uh, Brian Eno, David Byrne, My Life in the Bush of Ghosts from 1981. I've had this forever, basically, and I don't pull it out enough because it's just really, it was great. Shout out to my friend, um, Champ Sounds, who loves this record. Uh, this is... Gary Bart's NTU Troop, uh, 
Harlem Bush Music, Yuhuru, uh, on Milestone, uh, stunning record. Um, basically, one of the greatest soul jazz records, you know, from 1971 or 72. A couple more. Um, I always love a bit of Rodriguez, not too much, but uh, this is um, the best of completion that came out in Australia in 1977 on Blue Goose. This is quite an expensive piece these days. You can find the reissues quite easily, but this, the great thing with Rodriguez is he's only put out two albums. So, you know, on here you really have the, the best of the best of two albums, which it's not, it's not like you're spreading yourself over 10 or 15 albums. So you practically have everything that you need on there. Um, and it's just great. Rodriguez, a singer-songwriter from Detroit, um, who was very popular in Australia and South Africa in the 70s and throughout the 80s and so on, but was kind of undiscovered um, in America. Nobody really cared. Fantastic voice, delivery, lyrics. Yeah, he's an amazing guy. Um, this is a 2014 release, which I played yesterday. Mac DiMarco, Salad Days. Uh, this is a great record. Not brilliant, brilliant, but, but good enough to keep one of that I will include in my in my top albums of the year in, uh, in a month's time. Um, yeah, he's a Canadian guy, Mac DiMarco. And, you know, the music is classified as sort of slacker, sort of indie rock kind of laid back grooves. You feel that he's almost asleep when he sings. <laughs> and uh, finally, uh, this is a comp, Nick Drake, um, Made to Love Magic, that came out a few years back uh, because the, it was 2004, yes, that's when I got this. Um, came out uh, because they re well, they sort of unearthed a track called uh, Magic, uh, and they released it as a single when they put when they put this combination of sort of offcuts and kind of you know sort of alternate versions of songs. It's great. Anyway, that's what I've got for you this week. I hope you enjoy, and. Um, you know, keep it up, VC, and thank you for your face uh, responses. Thank you, VC.